Okay, so let's start with the material for today. The related rates, as I was mentioning, uh, it's a famously um, involved type of problem for this, for the, for this course. Uh, so I remember having lots of fun in the library reading about related rates problems back in the day, made me nostalgic to prepare for this, for this lecture. So um, let's, uh, let's talk about what, they, what it means. So suppose that you have two different functions of time. Functions, let's call them y of t and x of t. So now the independent variable is time, not x. Okay, so the two of them are related by an equation. By an equation. To make it simple, to give you a concrete example, suppose that x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Okay, what that means is that whatever y is at any given time and whatever x is at any given time, they satisfy this equation. Graphically, they have to be on a circle, right? That's what this means. That they have to lie on the circle with radius 5. So, then, one can obtain information about, let's say, x of t, x prime of t, sorry, from information about y prime of t. Okay? So, you know the relation between the two functions. And you know how fast x is changing, or sorry, y is changing in this case, and you want to find out how fast x is changing. Any ideas to how we could do that? If we know how fast x is changing, how do we find out how fast y is changing, or vice versa? Well, we're going to draw upon something we learned last time, which is implicit differentiation. Think about x of t and y of t as functions of time, and we're going to derivate on both sides. So if x of t is a function of time, what is the derivative of x squared? 2x times x prime, right? We've already talked about this before. If, you know, think, about, think about this being some function in particular, for example, cosine, right? So the derivative of cosine squared is 2 times cosine times the derivative of cosine, right? So in general, the derivative of x of t squared is 2x times x prime plus 2y times y prime, sorry, plus, and then this is equal to 0. So the way that I get from here to here is by derivating on both sides. The derivative of the left side is 2x times x prime. The derivative of this is uh, 2y times y prime. The derivative of the right-hand side is 0. Okay? So, if this is known and this is unknown, then I can figure out what this value is from the known information. There are, in this equation, there are more variables than just x prime and y prime. There's also x and y, right? So it's a little bit more tricky than that. But, but this is the main idea. The, the idea is that if you have an equation relating x prime and y prime, and you know y prime, you should be able to figure out x prime. Is that idea uh, clear, more or less? Yes? Once again, we have two functions of time, x t and y of t, and they're related by an equation. So what I do is I derivate on both sides with respect to time, and suppose that I know y prime, then I can figure out x prime. So here's a specific problem. Um, so problem, x of t, y of t functions such that x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. If y prime is equal to 1, 
find out x prime at the moment when, uh, let's say, x is equal to 4, y is equal to 3. OK? So related rates problems tend to be word problems. And I'm making it a little bit simpler this time by not throwing too much additional information. We're making an abstract problem first. We'll do more concrete problems in a moment. But basically, the idea is always the same. Do a diagram and understand the problem. And read carefully. So, in this case, we have x and y, two functions on the circle. For example, something like this. OK? So the function x of t and the function y of t are such that you're always on the circle. Make sense? Because x squared plus y squared is a constant. OK? And what are we given? Are we given x prime or y prime? Or what, are, what else are we given? So we're given y prime equals 1. And the unknown is x prime when x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 3. OK, just for verification, uh, if x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 3, does it satisfy this equation? Well, 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25. Right? Oops. It better be 25. All right, so that's the first part. Now, relate the functions through an equation and derivate. In this case, we have simply the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. I gave it to you. So I can derivate on both sides, and I get 2x times x prime plus 2y, y prime is equal to 0. OK? And once again, this is known. And this here is unknown. OK, and the third part is to plug in the known information, plug in to find the unknown. So in this case, we know that x is equal to um, 4, and y is equal to 3, and y prime is equal to 1. So 2 times 4 times x prime plus 2 times 3 times y prime is equal to 0. And that means that x prime is equal to minus Minus 6 divided by 8 is equal to minus 3 fourths. OK, so that's the general idea. You have two functions. You have the derivative of one. You can figure out the derivative of the other. Let's, uh, let's move on to a more concrete problem. There's going to be more words involved. So I think, I think more words is harder. But maybe, maybe more words and more concreteness is easier. I don't know.
So example. I'm just going to write down the problem. So let's see, an oil tanker, an oil tanker is spilling oil forming a circular spill. Okay, the area of the spill grows at 100 meters squared per minute. That's how fast the spill is growing, the area of the spill. Now, how find how fast the radius of the spill is growing when the spill is 2,000 meters in diameter. Okay, so let's think about this. Oil tanker spilling a bunch of oil. Does it make sense? So what, what does it mean that the area of the spill is growing at a constant rate? It means the, the, the tanker is dumping, dumping oil at a constant rate, right? Right? If the oil, if, if tanker is, is dumping oil at a constant rate, like if you, you can imagine a leak of a particular flow, a fixed rate, that means that the area is going to grow uh, um, a constant, uh, with, with a constant rate, right? Now, if the area of the spill grows with a constant rate, does that mean that the radius of the spill grows at a constant rate? No, right? So think about this. Think, just, just, just think about the spill growing. There's a particular flow of, 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 of oil coming out. So in the beginning, the radius is the, the spill is growing fast, right? And afterwards, the spill is still growing. The area is still growing at the same rate, but the radius is not increasing as fast as before. Does that make sense? So you should think about this in your head. It should make sense to you before we even talk about the math. In the beginning, the radius grow fast, but afterwards, the radius the radius doesn't grow as fast. It kind of slows down because you have a really big spill, right? You have to throw a lot of oil for the radius to go, let's say, from 1,000 uh, meters to 1,001 meters. Whereas when the radius is 100 meters, it takes a little bit, it takes much less oil to go from 100 meters to 101 meters. Does that make sense? Okay, so you should realize the nature of the problem, ideally. Then you're, you're gonna be much better off. So think about this spill growing. So. Every single time that you do a related race problem, what I suggest is that you draw a dragon. I actually noticed something interesting in the grading of the midterm. Um, there was a problem about uh, limits of a piecewise continuous function. And uh, first I asked you to draw it, and then I asked you to tell me a lot of information about this function. What I found is that whoever drew it right got all the rest of the problem correct. And the people that didn't draw correctly, or were kind of sloppy and just do a draw right, right away and didn't think too much about it, were not able to do the rest of the problem. So to me, that, was, that showed very clearly that having a clear graphical idea of the problem is like halfway, halfway there. It's like you're already halfway there. If you, if you understand enough to draw a diagram, um, makes a big difference. Okay, so, I mean, in principle, the spill, you know, you can draw a boat if you want and then a spill out somewhere, I don't know, and the boat is in trouble or something, whatever. Right? That's not really a diagram, okay? That's, that's just a drawing. It's like the turkey last time. So the real diagram is something like this. You have a circle and you have 
the radius of the spill, R of t. Okay, so we need to identify two functions, right? This is all about, about two different functions. So obviously the radius of the spill is one of the functions. What do you think is the other function involved here in this problem? What other function are we talking about? What is it? The area. The area, that's right. So one of the two functions is the radius. Another one of the functions is the area of the spill. Those are the two functions, the radius and the area. And uh, we are given information about the rate of change of A. Okay? I'm going to uh, um, get rid of the units for this problem. You know, once you understand the problem, when you write it into mathematics, you can ignore the units. But you have to be careful to write everything in the same units. I don't think, I doubt that we're going to be sneaky enough to change the units for you, but if the units were different, you would have to change them to the same units. So for example, uh, if the spill was two kilometers, you know, in the end, if we ask you what, how this fast the spill is growing, when the spill is two kilometers, you have to bring it to 2,000 meters. You cannot write just two, okay? At that point, you can ignore the units, and you write A prime equals 100, and the unknown, is R prime when, okay, and now here, here's the thing. R prime is not constant. We already talked about this R prime first, R grows first fast, then it kind of slows down. It's still growing, but it grows slower every time. So there is no one answer. The, the answer is not R prime equals five. It really depends on at what point in time you're talking about, right? And that's when we use this information, when the spill is 2,000 meters in diameter. In a sense, the 2,000 meters in diameter is referring to a particular moment in time, and you want to find out how the radius is growing at that moment in time. So when the diameter is equal to 2,000 meters. In terms of the radius, what does it mean that the diameter is 2,000 meters? Yes, sir? The radius is half. The radius is one half the diameter, that's right. So this is the same thing as asking, what is R prime when the radius is equal to 1,000 meters? Okay, so now we have a diagram uh, we thought about the problem, we read it carefully, right? So we can do two, which is to relate the functions the functions and derivate. So you got two functions, R of t and A of t. Can anybody think of some equation that these two functions must satisfy at any time? How are these two functions related? Yes? That's right. You guys, know, you guys all know a formula which essentially writes the area in terms of the radius. Right? So there you go. The area of, a, of any circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Right? So you didn't maybe think at first that that might be necessary, but there you go. This equation relates the area function with the radius function. That's, that's the equation you were looking for, some equation that relates the two things. Okay, now let's derivate. I, I'm gonna derivate this thing on both sides so that means that a prime is equal to pi times 2r times r prime. So in your head, you have to realize these two are functions of time, right? So the derivative of a of t is a prime. The derivative of this, r of t, is 2 times r times r prime. We're not derivating with respect to r or anything like that, okay? Um, Okay, so there you go. 
So that's, that's it. And you can think once again, I'm just going to write it for, for clarity, is that this is known and this is unknown. But of course, we also need to figure out what R is. Because these are not, you know, there's also an R in there. So now, <clears throat> plug in. Plug in at um, R equals 1,000 meters. Okay. So A prime is equal to what? 100 is equal to pi times 2R. But remember, R is 1,000 meters times R prime. Okay? So that means that R prime is equal to, I can cancel two of these, uh, two of these uh, zeros on the left and the right, and I get one over 20 pi. Okay, how's that? Now, what are the units for this thing? If you want, we can bring the units up in the end. So how fast is the radius changing? So the radius is in units of meters. Meters. So the rate is meters per unit time, which is minutes. That's right. OK? There you go. That's a related rates problem. You figure out the problem, you relate the two equations, and then you plug in to evaluate the rate that you want. Questions? No questions? OK. OK, let's do another one just for kicks. And uh, we're going to make it a little harder, just a little bit. So example, um, I'm going to tell you another word problem, so let's write it down. Sand is being pumped um, on a pile on the ground at a rate of 30 square foot per minute. So this already tells you the units that we're going to be using for this problem. We have units of uh, space is feet, feet, and the units of the units of time is the minutes. Forming. a conic pile such that uh, the height is equal to the diameter of the base. OK. Question is, how fast 
is the height increasing when the pile is 10 foot high. Okay, so sand is being pumped on a pile on the ground at a rate of 30 feet squared per minute, forming a conic pile such that the height is equal to the diameter of the base. So let's think about this problem. It's actually not too different from the one from the spill. You're throwing uh, sand, let's say, from a, from a hole. Let's say that there's a conveyor belt, and there's sand falling in a very specific spot on the, on the ground. So what happens is that the sand starts to accumulate, right? And it forms a pile that essentially is a circle and it um, forms a cone over here and that cone starts growing. Let me, do, let me do a graph of this. So there's a bunch of sand falling and it falls onto a pile that looks like this. And this pile is growing. The base of the pile is circular, and there's also a height of the pile. So it's good to draw this, this kind of physical situation first. Um, once again, do you think that the, the height of the pile is, is growing always at the same rate? What do you think? Say at first the height starts growing fast, then afterwards the height doesn't grow as fast, right? Okay, so that's the right intuition. After a while it doesn't grow as fast because it would grow, it would take a lot of sand to make it grow, say from here to here, it takes a lot of sand. From here to here it takes much less sand, right? So the, the rate of change of the height depends on time. It's not growing at a constant rate. Okay, so maybe a more, um, a more um, a stylized uh, diagram would be something like this. Here you have the base. I don't know, do you want to call it base, B for base? Yeah, let's call it B for base. And uh, this thing here, is the height. And each of them is a function of time. Okay, but now, <clears throat> what else do we know about this pile? We're being told something about the pile. The base of the pile and the height of the pile are equal, that's right. So H of T is equal to B of T. Okay, we are given, what are we given? Are we given, uh, oh, okay, sorry, well, I think I'm, I'm missing one of the functions. <coughs> what other function am I, am I missing here? What function am I missing? A prime? H prime. Okay, but what, no, okay, so what, are, what am I given? There you go. The rate of change of what? Mm -hmm. Not the area of the base? The volume, right? I know the volume, I know how fast the volume of the pile is growing because I'm throwing in 30 foot squared of sand per minute, right? So you, cannot, you also have to think about the volume. That's the rate of change. So the question was, shouldn't the volume be 30 uh, feet cubed per minute? That is the rate of change of the volume. It's not the volume itself, right? Well, 
I don't understand your question. Should it, shouldn't it be what? The, the rate of change uh -huh. be 30 cubic feet per minute. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this is not two-dimensional sand. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Right, thanks, that was the type. So the, 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 the sand is uh, 30 uh, cubic feet per minute. Okay, so this is the volume of the, of the pile. And the given is V prime of T is equal to 30. And we're not gonna write the units. And what we, find, what we wanna find out is the unknown is um, what is it? H prime of T. And uh, what, what, what else do we know about the, the time? Like at what point do we want to calculate H prime? When H is equal to 10. Okay? Great. All right, so then, um, now we need to relate the two things with an equation. Relate the two rates or functions. Okay, so before we were talking about the areas of function of the radius, now, is there some way that you can think of to relate any of these three things? Um, yes? Volume equals pi r squared times 2 r. Pi r squared times? 2 r. What about h? h is 2 r. Oh, good. I like that. Um, <clears throat> Okay, but hold on, there's no R here, right? Okay, this is a more complicated problem than before. We may need to introduce auxiliary variables, okay? So um, I agree with you, we may introduce the radius as a, as a possible, as a possible uh, auxiliary variable. Okay, and in terms of the radius, what is the volume of a cone? of radius r and height h. Do you guys know this? Okay, let me ask you a related question. What would be the volume of a cylinder of, of, uh, of, of circular base of radius r and height h? Okay, if this was a whole cylinder, it would be pi r squared times h, right? Do you agree? If it was a whole cylinder, it would be pi r squared h. So just as a reminder, as a, as a, as a, as a uh, way to remember, to remember this formula, the, the volume of a cone in, is one third of that, okay? So it's one third of the volume of the corresponding cylinder. So there you go. Um, all right, so that's the volume of a cone given a base r and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a height h, okay? Now, but r is, a, is an auxiliary variable, okay? Right now, I have a relation between three different functions, the volume, h, and r. And I want to get rid of one of them. Yes, Eric? Isn't r half of h? So That's right. And that's where that's where you were you were you, what you were mentioning, is that we actually know r in terms of h, so we can get rid of r. Okay, this is the additional complication of this problem, this particular problem, that we have one more variable, but we have to get rid of it. By the time that we derivate, we need to have just a relation between those two, nothing else. Relate the two rates. There should not be any third thing swimming around. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. So. Since r is equal to b over 2, the base over 2, and the base is equal to h, so that means that r is equal to h over 2, right? 
And this means that V is equal to one third pi times H over two squared times H. So now suddenly we have a relation between V, the given, and H, the unknown, the unknown rates. The, 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 the function that we are going to be given uh, the rate of and the function that we're going to be looking for the rate of. So V is equal to one third times one fourth pi h to the three. Okay, uh, I'm writing this down as h squared over four. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to derivate on both sides. Only, only now that I have related the two, the two rates, I can derivate. So there's no auxiliary variables or functions. Okay, now we can derivate and we write V prime is equal to one twelfth pi times three h squared times h prime, right? The derivative of h to the three is three h squared times h prime. And that means that V prime is equal to one fourth or pi fourths uh, h squared times h prime. Great. And now the third part is uh, to plug in. Okay, plugging in can be a little bit tricky. You may need to be a little bit careful about exactly what you plug in. In this case, you're thinking of the situation when the pile is 10 meters high, okay? At that point, basically, we know that this is 10, okay? This is the unknown, and this thing is known. So we can write 30 is equal to pi over 4, times 10 squared times h prime. And that means that h prime is equal to, let's see, 120 pi, wait, no, sorry. Uh, no, this would be, if I multiply on both sides, I get uh, 120, and then I divide by 100 pi. Okay, so 120 divided by 100 pi. Okay, which is equal to 12 over 10 pi. And the units are what? Feet per minute. Okay? Questions? Okay, we have time for one more problem. So let's do one more problem. Okay. Um, okay, so boat is being pulled to um, to a dock using a rope. 
Okay, I'm not going to have time to do everything uh, with uh, to to write everything down. So let me let me actually draw you the diagram. We have a boat here. Okay, the boat is tied up to a rope, and there's some guy here pulling the rope. And here's the dock. Okay. Now here's the given information. The length of the rope, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just, because we don't have, we only have like five minutes. So I'm going to give you the, the, the given information is that the uh, rope is decreasing at a rate of, it doesn't matter, but let's just, let's just do it here. Okay, one meter per second. Okay, so what it means is that I'm pulling the rope at a constant rate, okay? And that means that there is a minus sign in here, right? Minus one meter per second. And the unknown is the distance, um, Let's see, if we call this thing the distance, and we call this thing the length, okay? And I'm actually gonna tell you one more information here, is that there is, let's say, uh, one meter between the height of the rope here and the, the, the position at which I am pulling, okay? That's gonna be important too. So. So the question is, how, how fast is the boat approaching the dock? Uh, let's see. When, when the distance between the dock and the boat is eight meters. Okay, so that's the question. You're pulling the rope at a constant rate. The boat is approaching the dock, right? And the question is, how fast is the boat approaching the dock when the distance between the boat and the dock is eight meters? Okay, so here's the diagram. A little bit cleaner is that here's L of time. Here's the distance of time. And here's this height. This height is fixed. So what is the... That was, all this is one. So what is the equation that relates L and D? What do you think? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, yes. I was actually just listening to a talk on geometry yesterday who said that there's pretty clear evidence that the Chinese actually had proved Pythagoras theorem 900 years before Pythagoras. It really shouldn't be called Pythagoras theorem. It should be called some Chinese guy's theorem. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, sorry, no, not this, it's uh, different, sorry. It's uh, one squared plus d squared is equal to L squared. Okay? You agree? It's Pythagoras, or at least we call it Pythagoras. So derivative on both sides, and we get the derivative of one is zero, the derivative of this is two d times d prime, the derivative of this is two L times L prime. Okay, and uh, which one is given? This one is given, and which one is unknown? Okay, but now it's a one step further. We cannot just plug in d equals eight, because you see there's an L here missing. If we, if we plug in here, we plug in here, we're still missing L, okay? So that's, that's the one step that I, that I also wanted to show you, which is the following. <coughs> when D is equal to eight, okay, this distance is eight, and this distance is one, okay? 
So what do you think what should the L be? So L is equal to square root of 1 plus 64. Is that really square root of 65? Seriously? It doesn't simplify? Nope. Not in this problem. OK, fine. Square root of 65. OK. Maybe I give you the slightly wrong numbers, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, that's what it is. It's that, that's the length when the distance from the boat is 8 meters. So we plug in and we get 2 times d, which is 8 meters, times d prime is equal to 2 times l, which is uh, square root of 65, times l, sorry, times uh, l1, which is uh, minus 1. So that means that d prime is equal to, this cancels out, and we get minus square root of 65 divided by 8. And this goes in meters per uh, second. That's it. Great. See you next time. Have a nice weekend.